Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about optimal theory of motor learning. Uh, so this theory was developed by Gabrielle Wolf and Rebecca Luthwaite. Sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I apologize if, if Rebecca, if you're ever watching this. Um, but they developed this theory in 2016 and is considered a complementary theory rather than an alternative theory to the others that we've discussed so far. Um, so complementary, meaning that it adds to Schmidt's schema theory and dynamical system theory um, rather than being in place of. Um, so it acknowledges issues that are kind of glossed over in those other theories. So it adds to those and kind of fills in the blanks a little bit. Um, so there are three important aspects of this theory. One is about um, conditions that enhance expectancies for future performance. The second is variables that influence learners autonomy. Third is external focus of attention on the intended movement effect. And so I'll talk about each of those separately as we go on. Um, optimal in the name of this theory stands for optimizing performance through intrinsic motivation and attention for learning. Um, so there's a, a special emphasis here on motivational and attentional influences on behavior that need to be considered in motor control and motor learning. Um, so our first thing here, enhanced expectancies, uh, it's referring to a person's expectations for future performance success in the learning and performance of motor skills. Now that could be related to past experience, so past successes or lack thereof, uh, could also be related to confidence in their ability um, based on their ability to perform other related motor skills. It can be related to feedback that they're receiving during practice or competition, or it depends on what it is, but um, anything that is going to affect the person's expectation of their future performance, um, essentially this theory is acknowledging that that's really important in the learning of that skill and also the performance of that skill. Autonomy. Um, so autonomy can mean slightly different things in different contexts, but here we mean uh, that a person is able to exercise control over a situation. Um, so it's found again and again throughout the literature that when somebody has choices about whatever it is that they're participating in, that it increases motivation um, and that increases learning, it increases effort. But when you increase motivation for anything, it increases the person's willingness to apply themselves and to put forth more effort. And more effort usually is going to mean more learning and better performance. Um, so this can mean choices about all sorts of different features in their environment or in their practice setting. Um, so choices about when to receive feedback, whether to use an assistive device, like during a balancing task or rehabilitation, like do they want to use a cane or not? Um, and it could be any kind of other environmental or task related features. It could even be like choosing the color of the ball that they're going to practice with or um, any time you can offer a learner choice, it's going to help, <laughs> generally speaking. We'll talk more about that in future videos. Um, makes the performer feel more involved and more actively engaged, which increases motivation and increases effort. It also promotes deeper processing of information um, and increases interest and motivation. All right, and then the final key here, external focus of attention. Um, so the performer is actively monitoring environmental or task related cues rather than body related cues during performance. So that's what we mean by external focus of attention is focusing attention outside of the body. Um, so if we're only looking at body related cues, like how things feel or trying specifically to control the movements of the body, rather than focusing on things external to the body, like uh, things happening around us or with objects or environmental cues that are, are part of the task um, that we're not going to perform as well. Um, so like, for example, in a balance task on a moving platform, so like you're standing on something and trying to balance, if you focus on the platform, you're going to be more successful in maintaining your balance than you would be if you're focusing on your feet and trying to keep your feet from moving too much. 
Um, and so external focus of attention not only leads to better performance, but it also promotes non-conscious automatic control of a skill. So it helps the, the learner get better at controlling that skill and executing that task without having to pay as much attention, attention as you move forward. All right, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.